it's been a few years since I've heard security really top of mind awareness or talked about. And when it was, you know, four or five years ago, it really was more about hash rate and blockchain security. And could the blockchain be rolled back? Back when Bitcoin, all it did was just record itself. You know, there's no smart contracts. There wasn't a lot to exploit. You know, they had to look for some exploits in the actual code to screw the blockchain. And that was like always the buzzword. Oh, it can't, it can't 51% this, it can't that. Oh, this is why. And there was really no decentralized finance at the time or anything else in the space other than that. And that was like the top of mind awareness. And that seems to be forgotten. No one really talks about security anymore. Everyone's always talking about, you know, third party and treasures and all this other stuff you could do. And that died off. And then the Ethereum craze came. Smart contracts really started coming into their own and moving over NFTs and everything else. And I don't think security's talked about enough. And I think new people getting on here really should kind of understand what can happen to them. Uh, the Badger DAO hack and this is getting pretty common, to be perfectly honest. Like, cream got drained. So many places got drained. And when you think about it, um, it seems like forever ago that the 51% attacks on blockchains were being discussed. And there was a few of the coders and devs that came out and said, you know, look, uh, blockchain's only 8 years old. It's only 10 years old. We don't really have a lot of history to know, like, what could happen. The track record's good so far. But the realistic reality is, is that it's not that old overall. And as time went on, they started finding, you know, more and more issues and more things they could do with blockchain. So if you think about BTC only being maybe 12 years, you know, old and Ethereum being a little less than that. And then you really think about how recent smart contract use has really become. It's really recent. And the kids that are coding the majority of the stuff in NFTs and the dApps in the front end, they're not lots of experience in that. I mean, it's a newer thing. Lots of experience in coding, sure. But it would seem like the people that are better at coding are on the other side. They're out there waiting to drain contracts. They're not the good actors in the space. They're not the people that are like trying to build something for the people. And that's unfortunate. So you really got to take it upon yourself to minimize risk vectors. And one of those things I want to talk about is kind of how this happened. So the Badger Dow protocol suffers a $120 million exploit. And in the grand scheme of things, what's 120 million? Not that much. But if you're one of the guys that had, you know, their life savings wrapped up one, two, $3 million, something you worked really hard to achieve, or you're someone who works a nine to five and maybe, you know, your account is $50,000 or less and everything's wrapped up in this, this is a shitty thing to have happen to you. And um, so there's a few few platforms that covered this, but CoinDesk, you know, they, they covered it pretty well. So we'll just go over go over the basics for them. So on Wednesday night, an attacker drained funds from the wallets of dozens of users of the Badger DAO Yield Vault protocol using malicious contract permissions. There again, there's a problem with these smart contracts. They're just coming to their own. There's not been enough longevity for people to really understand all the vectors where someone can come along and get them. And this is what I found most interesting. Blockchain data and security analysis analytics company peck shield has concluded the total loss um about 2100 btc and f20 ETH. And that's cool but users first reported possible problems in the protocol channel and discord and this is the other thing like all this stuff is decentralized you know maybe you jump on telegram and you report there's an issue or discord like these aren't businesses these are decentralized things there's problems with this uh massive ones so as you go on further into the article it talks about um, speculation is, uh, in online channels is that the hack is a result of an exploit in the Badger DAO user interface and not the core protocols contract. Okay. So something on maybe our end we can do, and we're going to cover that real quick. You know, I mean, there's so much that has to be done, but you got to trust the guys that are coding the blockchains. You got to trust the guys that are making the dApps. You've got to trust the guy writing the smart contract. Then you got to trust the guy that is auditing all this is better than his counterpart who's waiting to rip all this shit apart and screw you over. That's a problem. There's not enough longevity in this space yet for that. It, I mean, you got banks that get hacked at this point and banks have a lot more, you know, experience and track record in cryptography and in ways that people try to get into and over the firewalls and everything else. You're just asking for it in crypto. Unfortunately, I think one of the biggest things that is, is happening is that, they didn't even get into the, the, the contract. They got into the front end. They got over the, the front end of the firewalls and everything else, which, you know, who knows? I don't know. I'm not a coder. I can only go by what they say, but I know what I can do. I can definitely come over here, at least to my wallet. 
and make some choices. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to I want to be part of this DeFi stuff. You know, I want to go over there and play around in the DEXs. I want to do all the things everybody else does. I want to connect to all these front end dApps that cause me issues. Good thing to do is come over to your MetaMask or whatever wallet you're using, pop into your accounts, see what you have connected down here and go through and just start removing stuff that you don't need. Don't give those front ends the ability to get into your wallet, just reduce it. Uh, I popped into the Sushi Sushi Apps Discord and talked to them because I have some LP staking going on there. And I wanted to know, I mean, I, I don't know, it might be comical to some people that I ask, but I don't know personally. Um, if I disconnect it, will I lose my stake in an LP? And they said, no, it's fine. Just disconnect it. When you're ready, just reconnect it. So I disconnected everything and anything that I felt could cause me an issue and just decided to reduce some risk in those areas. That's kind of scary to me that all my stuff could be taken through, you know, a bad acting DAP or a poorly written contract that can keep calling into my wallet, things like that. I think it's best to just go through and start disconnecting stuff and only using it briefly back and forth and turn it back on as you need it. Uh, the space is just really too new for this kind of stuff. I don't want to miss out on this space and I don't want to down the space because I think there's great progress being made. There's a lot of legacy about to be onboarded, but when you have hacks like cream getting whacked, badger to getting hacked and all this other stuff happening, you know, you have to take it upon yourself to kind of understand that that's a one way street. If you got hacked at your bank, you call your bank and your bank's putting the money back. Uh, and decentralized finance and decks like, once it's gone, it's gone. You know, it's buyer beware. And I don't think that sits well with a lot of people. And that's why Legacy hasn't onboarded just yet. And when we keep having problems like this, that doesn't make people confident to want to, you know, swap over all their money from Legacy banks. The the maxi attitude of like, oh, banks are evil and everybody needs to limit their power and switch over to, you know, Dex and let's, you know, you know, let's limit the evil governments. Well, with the evil governments, at least if my money gets stole, my evil government makes sure the money that I use is put back. You know, they might abuse the shit out of me in a lot of other ways, but at least my personal bank account is safe. I mean, this is buyer beware and it's best coder against best coder. And I don't like that. That's kind of, that's kind of scary. So it is one reason why I stick to the, the centralized exchanges over the DEXs. Um, I don't do a lot over in the other side. I don't cover a lot on that side because I feel like the risk through the you know, protocols and everything else on the other side are way too new. And they're, this is like too common of a story. It's happening way too much. And I don't want all my money taken like that. I don't, I don't, I mean, the, the reward is fantastic over there, but risk goes with reward. And the risk is a lot of people either get rugged, screwed, um, jack my ain't on, you know, contract makers that are smarter than they are. Um, you know, honest devs that meant well, but got jacked by someone else who's just a better coder than they are. There's too much of this going on. So at least if you're going to play around in this space, make sure you go through and disconnect stuff out of your wallet. Um, start looking into as much security as you can to keep yourself safe and start to reduce the ways into your, you know, buyer beware risk wallet that once is transferred, it's all gone type of thing. I mean, I lost all my money once on Cryptopia, you know, getting, Getting hacked and shut down, that was that was no fun. You know, that wasn't that wasn't a good feeling. You know, it was a lot of hard work that was years of money down the drain. And I've had other issues, you know, I've gotten wicked in Binance and other bullshit that, you know, they're not gonna refund your money. I've gotten fucked in BitMEX, you know, locked out of the interface and, you know, <laughs> trading high leverage and as stuff went sideways, not running a loss, you know, got stop loss, got liquidated. And I don't expect to be locked out of my account. You know, if I see something crazy going on, I want to jump in and place a sale. But when you're watching something live trade and everything is tanking and you can't place an order, you know, <laughs> overloads and you're getting rejected, like not a good feeling. You know, I don't have those problems in stocks. And if you do, there's the ability to unwind stuff like that. So much better reward in, in crypto, but the risk is just exponentially more, exponentially more. And I think it, everyone should take the time to start to learn better protocols and decide if crypto is the right place to be with your money for the risk versus reward.